Hi guys, it's Cindy Leach, your Paula McClay Tutor, and today's PCT product demo, I'm going to show you Pearlex powdered pigments on polymer clay. Now, um, just a video ago or so, I did, showed you a um, organizer that was filled with different products, and one of the drawers was filled with my Pearlex powders, and um, so I thought I would show you how to use Pearlex powders on polymer clay. Now, um, here's just a little tip from one of our viewers. She suggested I, I flip all the um, containers over because they were in here before this way. And this way I can see all of them and they look really pretty in there. Now, this is 24 different, um, different colors and they are from the two different sets. Um, the Series 2 set and the Series 3 set. Um, this, I got the Series 2 set um, years ago and it, so you can tell by the packaging it's a little bit older style and here's the Series 3 one. Um, this is the, the way they look now and all the little containers are in there. And then they have quite a few, whoops, 12 colors in each pack listed here. And what I have done is I have made little color chips of each of the colors onto a black and white sample of polymer clay. Now um, I'll show you how to do that in a second, but um, what I did first for the, to make the little color chips, I took uh, a clean slice of um, white and black and butt them up next to each other and then just took a little square cutter and put it on a diagonal so that I would get um, a black and white sample like this. Oh, look, I didn't even line that, it went up. Then I took each sample and put it on a baking tray with a piece of paper in the bottom. And then I wrote the number of the color I was adding on right beside it so I wouldn't get them mixed up. Then after they were baked, I put, uh, I wrote on the back what the number was so I wouldn't get it mixed up with um, just an archival permanent pen. And that's how I actually made the samples. But each of them, and the reason why I did it in black and white like this is because the colors, a lot of them are inference colors. So they're, they're uh, sparkly powders that will look different on different, at different angles and on different co colored backgrounds. And some are a little bit more opaque and some are a little bit more translucent. So I've got each of the colors here and how they look. And you can see that they are fairly um, rich pigments. This color here is Aztec Gold and it looks really beautiful on both black and white. This is Antique Copper. All of these colors look really beautiful. You can see this one's quite dense. You can barely tell that there was black and white underneath that one. Um, this is Antique Silver. And if you don't put it on perfectly even, you'll get kind of a blotchy look to it because it's a little on the translucent side. Uh, this color here is one of the interesting ones. It's called Duo Green and Yellow. And hopefully the camera will pick up on it. But from certain angles, and you can really see it on the white, the color will look blue or greenish. And then um, from another angle, it will look um, quite yellow. So that's quite cool. You don't see the, the green on the black as well, but on the white you really do. Um, this color here is called bright yellow. It's quite a golden kind of look. Um, this is flamingo pink. Now the flamingo pink when it's on black almost has a purpley look to it, but it's very flamingo-y <laughs> on the white. Flamingo-y is a word you know. All right, so this next one is spring green. And you can, you can really see the green sparkles in that. Hopefully the camera is picking this up properly. Uh, this color here is turquoise. This one is true blue. Now, these uh, pigment sparkly powders are more suited for other type projects than just big flat surfaces, but this will give you a good idea on how everything looks on both colors. Uh, this color here is uh, Misty Lavender. It's a really pretty one. This one here is Blue Russet. Now this is the only one in the series, the two series that I have that has such large flakes to it. 
This one is called Sparkling Copper. And to me, it seems like uh, the copper leaf, like, you know, gold leaf and silver leaf, seems like the copper leaf just ground up into a relatively fine powder rather than this, the super fine mica particles that these other ones are. Now this is series three. This one here is not very metallic. It's called carbon black and it is very much like charcoal, like as if you scraped it off charcoal, it would be a very great one to use in one of my full raku techniques. Um, this color here is called pumpkin orange. To me, it's quite golden looking actually. It doesn't seem super orange. Um, salmon pink. This one really looks purpley on the black. I think the um, powders in it seem to have like a pink and purple two-tone two kind of look to it. Um, pink gold. Now this one's very interesting. Um, if you look straight onto it, the pink is on the white side is very pink and it's quite gold on the black, but if you hold it at an angle, um, you'll see the, the golden shimmer to it. This has a very rose gold kind of look. You can get some very great effects that are super popular right now. This one here is called Reflex Violet. That's a pretty one. Looks a little smeary the way I added it on there, but it's very pretty. This one is Gray Lavender. And I really love this color. It has, um, it's, it has a kind of an antique look to it. This color here is quite interesting. It is called mink. And it's kind of a, a russet kind of color with a greeny kind of um, shimmer to it. This color here is sky blue. It's quite turquoisey. And this one here, I was surprised how much I really liked it. Um, it is called pearl white and it has a real um, pearly color if you want to make faux pearls or um, any of the um, kind of uh, faux uh, shells and that kind of stuff. It would look great with that. Uh, this color here is antique bronze. And it's quite a dark one. It really masks both the, of the colors underneath. Uh, this one is sunset gold. It's kind of a greeny undertone to me anyways. And then this one is another one of those cool duo colors. Now this one is a green and purple duo and hopefully the camera will pick up, but you can really see the purple on the black and really see the green on the white. But at the right angle, you can see both of the colors is quite, quite cool. So that is how all of those colors look. Now, like I said, it's not really, because it's kind of semi-translucent, it's hard to get like a super even um, finish to it. It's more suited to be kind of a surface thing rather than like covering a whole area. And I've got a couple of projects here where I've used Pearlex powders there just to add a, metal a metallic shine. I've added it in around the center here and in of this... Um, Cymbidium Orchid. It's from one of my tutorials. And this is just a smaller version of the same thing. And you can really see the sparkle in there. It's very, very pretty on polymer clay. Now here's um, a tutorial where I do a faux enamel technique and I've mixed some um, coppery uh, Perlex powder as well as some of the blues in with some liquid polymer clay. Um, you could either use Sculpey translucent liquid or I think actually seeing the sheen on there, I think I actually used, uh, where is it? Kato. Kato liquid polyclay. It's a little shinier. That's why I think that's the one I used on that one. You can see it has a very pretty effect. Um, and I used some on this, um, dogwood tutorial. And... I also use one just fooling around, just rubbing it on the top surface of this stamped uh, snowflake that I cut out. I was playing around with it. I've got a couple of samples here just to show you how to use it 
quickly. Now, here are here's some white clay here. Maybe we'll can you see it well here, Doug? Okay, good. I'll just do it here then. Um, I'll just grab a couple of I'll just grab one color here. This is uh what is it? Reflex violet. And I've got some black and white clay, other way around, <laughs> that I rolled one of my core rollers on. We've got a video on that if you want to check out those. But I rolled it across some a sheet of white clay and a sheet of black clay and I just wanted to show you how this would look and often there's some sitting in the lid there so that's a great place to um, to work from and I'm just going to use like a makeup sponge you could use your finger but sometimes it gets down too far into the uh, background area but if you just dip the lid into I mean the makeup sponge into the lid you can just control it a little better and you can just catch it on the top surfaces Ooh, isn't that so pretty and you could mix colors and do all sorts of neat things we'll try it here on the black you'll see the difference between how it looks on the black surface and on the white oh isn't that so pretty i think you're going to really love using perlex powders because they bond right with the clay um, you, you'll find like if I grab this and try to scratch it, it would be hard to get it off, but it could eventually rub off. So it really, whether you have to seal it or not really depends on the situation. If you had it on the outside of beads that were on your bracelet and they were going to be rubbing all the time, then you would want to protect them. But if they're on a sculpture, then it's not going to easily come off so you wouldn't necessarily have to protect it um, you could now pearl uh, jacquard the company that makes pearl x has a product called pearl x varnish which is compatible with the with the pearl x obviously and you can mix the pearl x powder into it and make a little paint and all kinds of neat things i haven't tested it on polymer clay yet though i have a good feeling that it will work but that will be another video, a test video, to see um, how this varnish um, does with polymer clay. But I've used other um, things like PYM2, um, any of this uh, clear liquid Sculpey, or um, any of the varnishes that are polymer clay safe. So you can do that to seal it. And you can also mix Pearl X powder, um, large amounts of it, into liquid clay, into solid clay. There's lots of neat things. I've been here for half the day already, so I don't want to go into those now. But in another video, I will do that um, sometime soon and show you how the other ways that you can use Pearl X powder in the clays and in other mediums. All right, so I hope that was um, helpful for you and that you learned a lot from this video. And if you like this video, do let us know. And if you've got any products that you'd like to see me test in our test lab or on, do a demo on, do leave us a suggestion in the comment section below. And if there's a technique you don't understand, we have done so many videos. So make sure you check those out and if you can't find what you need, then leave a uh, suggestion for that as well. All right, so we will see you next time and bye for now.